to have you here. What's on your mind? Well, I was fascinated with this tour that you're going to take to... Uh, For you a special uh, To Israel, place. yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> the way you were going there, I thought the next thing was going to be going to walk on water when you got to the Red Sea. <laughs> well, you're Mr. Controversy, you know. You, you stir up the devil, don't you? Part of the problem of the church historically has been that if you don't have any movers and shakers and nobody dissenting and nobody pointing things out, then you don't have any teaching ministry in the church because you teach by contrast. And um, the Christian church, his days of the church fathers till today, has been controversial. Uh, there's nothing wrong with controversy for the sake of truth. It's controversy just for the sake of controversy that's a sin. Yes. And controversy that speaks the truth in love is a biblical command. Now, what would it be like if the church never ever gave anybody any answer? Supposing all you did was go on television and smile at the camera and say, Jesus loves you. And the person out there says, yeah, but what am I going to do with this contradiction between this passage and that passage? Jesus loves you. What am I going to do about I mean, this passage obviously teaches that Jesus is, is uh, the Archangel Michael. Jehovah's Witness says that. Say, well, Jesus loves you. We're going to pray for you. You know what you're going to do? <clears throat> you're going to turn off everybody because people want answers to their questions. Now, when you get a closed experiment like that, where everybody is asking the same questions, then you know that the church is not answering them. Because if they were getting answers to those questions, they wouldn't be calling in my program or Bob Larson's or other shows that specialize in questions and answers and saying anything. <clears throat> They'd be getting all the information at home, but they're not getting it at home. I think that we've entered into an era which leading to the great apostasy and the rise of the Antichrist, whether you're pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation, you're going to get there one way or the other. Sure. Uh, it's all pure tribulation when you get down to it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the truth of the matter is, leading up to this, the scripture <clears throat> says, and we don't pay attention to it, that there will be a lulling of the mind of the church, that the church will accept evil as truth, that the church will accept false prophets rather than true prophets, that when we speak against error, as Paul was doing in his day, who was coming after him? The Corinthians, the Galatians, everybody wanted a scalp. John speaks against the Antichrist. Who's the bad guy? John. Who's the bad guy? Paul. But these are the apostles. Now, in the entire history of the church, I think we discussed part of this one time before. Mm -hmm. God raises up apostles in the beginning, prophets, and then the church fathers, then after them the reformers, and so forth. What was the purpose? It was to bring the church back to the path she deviated from. We see Christian leaders on television, and they're asked direct questions on national television. I mean, right out in the open, specifically. Do you believe this? They won't answer them. You have such leaders as Norman Vincent Peale, big power of positive thinking image. Mm -hmm. And Peale goes on the Donahue show. That's coast to coast. That's the biggest talk show you've got. Mm -hmm. And they got to discussing Christianity. And Donahue asked him point blank, is the only way to get to heaven Jesus? No, oh, good, no. I mean, after all, if you're sincere, you're, what's going on here? This is the former pastor of Marble Collegiate Church. I mean, this is a leader in the uh, Protestant, American Protestantism. Mm -hmm. And they get in the middle of the dialogue uh, on the subject of uh, what people believe, and they're criticizing Dr. Peel for some of his views, some of the people, and Donahue says, oh, the hell with them. This is, this is the, the people that are criticizing false doctrine. Mm -hmm. To hell with them. You can get riled about uh, AIDS and homosexuality, even though we're suppressing that as consistently as we can mm -hmm. to protect the gays. Um, uh, we can get excited about that because it's going to kill us. Right. That's why they're getting excited about that. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear anything about it. Blood transfusions. Right. But, right. but what else? <laughs> Nobody wants to come out and say what's wrong for fear that they're going to be criticized, for fear that they'll lose their constituency. <laughs> See? Now, the truth is that if you preach the gospel like it is, and you defend the gospel the way you're supposed to, God will take care of your finances and your constituency. 
He promises to. Sure. See? You, you do not... Uh, That's good. You, you, you do not get up and tell people what they want to hear to get their pocketbook. Are you suggesting that's going on today? I know it's going on. I mean, I can turn on my television set and I can see it. I mean, there's one major TV network, not this one, Christian TV network, where the host has got to have his, his uh, tear ducts connected to his kidneys because nobody could cry that much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how, could you, how could you possibly miss? It's every other minute. Money, money, money. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking for money for the Lord's work, mm -hmm. but when that is predominant in your approach. I it is to, a turn off. Sure it is. When I went to, uh, yeah. when I went to a big TV network not long ago, I won't discuss which one for the sake of public relations, uh, I went there and um, uh, they told me that I should speak as the Spirit leads me. Well, that's fair, isn't it? The Spirit leads you, you should speak that way, right? Okay. So as I got up to get on the stage, they handed me a slip of paper like this. It said, try and be positive in everything you say. <laughs> I want you to tell me how it's positive to tell somebody they're going to hell. Tell me. How positive can you get? You're going happy. to hell. <laughs> You're going to hell. That's positive, huh? Of course not. You're going to have to say, hey, I love praying for you, but, you know, if you, if you follow this path, you're lost. But <clears throat> don't want to do that. So be positive in everything you say. Do not mention Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, or Christian science. Now, here is an internationally recognized cult expert. They said, they introduced me that way. Bring me on the program, fly me 3,000 miles, sit me down, and before I go on, they hand me a slip of paper that says, be careful what you say about your expertise. Huh? Heavy. Now, he it's not only heavy, it is what nobody wants to face. It's censorship. Sure. And that's why Christian networks are going to come up for real legal action in the next five years because there are people out there filming these programs. I know this. Monitoring Christian networks and saying this is not representing the community. This is a money-making fundraising deal and we challenge that. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen because people are getting to the point and there's a lot of money out there that can be used to do this people out there are saying hey how come you can speak on ABC CBS NBC and PBS that's me I speak on secular 10 to 1 on Christian do you know why mm -hmm. because the Christians won't let me talk because they don't want to hurt anybody. but the secularists will let me talk how you like that yeah well you're here Yo, uh, I'm not talking about uh, our program here now you said earlier in the program I like what you said. You said, we're going to pull any punches, okay? Uh-huh. Pow. You ready for this? Uh, go. <laughs> okay. You just named three denominations, and I'm not here to tear them apart, but yeah. you obviously feel they're totally occult and uh, anti-biblical. Okay. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses say that the Trinity is pagan nonsense, that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael, that his death on the cross did, wasn't even on a cross, it was on a torture stake. It didn't pay for your sins, you got to work for it. And when he rose from the dead, he arose as a ghost. Plus the fact that he came back in 1914 invisibly and has been running the kingdom from Brooklyn. That ought to turn, that ought to turn you off immediately, okay? Then you've Brooklyn. Got, then you've got the Mormon church, Donnie and Marie Osmond, right? The Mormon Tabernacle Choir, mine eyes have seen the glory, right? You got that? Beautiful. Beautiful, marvelous. What's behind it? Mormon Church says, as God was, as God is, man may be, as man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. You can become a God. Mormonism. Jesus Christ is the spirit brother of Lucifer, who became the devil. They teach that? Oh, yes. Not only that. So obviously anything you say tonight, you have documented proof. I teach in a law school. Do you think I'm a fool? <clears throat> right. Crazy I might be. I'm not a fool. No. But let's, let's get the record straight. Okay, carry the on. The cults declared war on the church. We no, didn't I agree with you now. here. I agree with We're you. We're supposed to respond to that, you see? Right. But that's what you're not getting. Instead, you're getting, shh, don't say that. That's not loving. Well, by that standard, neither was Jesus. 
Because when he met the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the Herodians, he barbecued them. Matthew 23. I'm very mild, I mean, compared to his dealing with false doctrine. Now, Christ dealt with it. Paul dealt with it. Uh, we're not dealing with it. We don't want to face it. Now, Jehovah's the Mormons absolutely categorically say that when Jesus Christ came into the world, into existence by sexual relations between a resurrected God and the Virgin Mary. Now, that's blasphemous garbage. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Now, why won't our Christian leadership that dominates our major networks and dominates the country come together and say, Mormonism is the most rapidly growing dangerous non-Christian cult in the world, and we've got to stand together against it. Why won't they do it? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Let me go to an, another approach for a moment. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus said about these who taught other doctrines, right. let them alone. Now, the philosophy today, maybe in a lot of Christian networks and organizations, Christian organizations is, hey, if that guy over there on that corner in that church is all the organizations that you've just mentioned, plus others, is not teaching truth, and we believe that they're not teaching truth, let them alone. God will deal with the tares simultaneously with the wheat at the time of the harvest. Their idea is, and I want you to, I, I need an answer to this, yep. is let's preach the gospel, which is the truth, and the preaching of the truth automatically counteract error, and we don't have to bother them, in the words of Jesus, let them alone, just preach the truth that will counteract the error. Don't get involved with them. Look at your context of Matthew 15. He's not telling you to leave false teachers alone. There were people going around healing in his name, yes. using his name and right. so forth. Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're with us. Right. Leave them alone. But these people are against us. They've declared against us. So that position, the position then that I yeah. just mentioned yeah. of preach the truth, it'll automatically counteract error, leave the personalities and the names out, you don't agree with it. No, not only don't I agree with it, I don't know one major theologian in the history of the entire Christian church that will agree with it. I don't know one commentary that will exegete Matthew 15 to teach that. Now, if you really want to get technical on what the texts say, 47% of the New Testament, according to this, who's the greatest, one of the greatest living New Testament scholars, is apologetic, which means defending Christianity. Yes. If you could just turn the truth loose and let it do its job and not defend it, why do you have all the admonitions in the scripture? Contend earnestly for the faith, once for all delivered unto the saints. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. They shall gather to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, and the truth of God will be turned into mythology. Reprove them, rebuke them, exhort them with patience and teaching. Where's the rebuke? Where's the reproof? Where's the exhortation? You see, the people who are telling us not to defend Christianity are the people incapable of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the danger, the danger is, not only are they are incapable of doing it, but they hinder those that are capable. They stand in the way of the defense of the gospel. You good? Mm -hmm. And um, so you believe really church and Christian broadcasting should take a far more militant stand and come right out and name the baby John. I can see no reason why we do not follow a biblical principle. First of all, I'm a professor in a law school, Simon Greenleaf School, school right. of Law. We you had Dr. Dr. Montgomery on here. on here, right? He did a great job well, Wednesday he's night. He's a brilliant man, he and he's is. done a great job for God. The point that we're making, and he's making, and the school's making, and a lot of us are making in the Christian world, it, we're growing in numbers. We're not diminishing. I'm happy to say the young people are listening to us. Praise the Lord. And the more they listen, the more other people are going to listen, because they're the future of the church. Whatever future we've got left, it's young people. I've stopped talking to the theologians because the theologians are too busy in the ivory tower. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to the kids who are out there fighting for their lives mm -hmm. because nobody's helping them. Right. And, and what, we're facing, what we're facing is a direct denial of the defense of Christianity. And Dr. Montgomery brought that up. I brought that up. Others have brought it up. And the more we defend Christianity, the more people are going to say, well, that has merit to it. The more we obey Scripture, the more people will listen to us. Remember the apostles defended the gospel before the Sanhedrin? They didn't walk into the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 3 and 4 and say, 
Well, I mean, you stay on your synagogue and, and your temple, and we'll stay on our corner, and we're going to leave you alone. You leave us alone, and don't worry anymore. I mean, after all, God, we'll preach the gospel, and God's going to save people anyhow. So you guys go about your way, we'll go about our way. Is that what you get? You get Peter saying in there, whether it's proper to obey God or man, mm -hmm. you decide. Mm -hmm. Neither is there salvation than any other. There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby you must be saved. Jesus Christ. Well, why do we not enunciate that against Jewish, Islamic, Christ, non-Christian religions and cultic structures in the United States that are constantly attacking Christianity? Why do we not respond to them? Why don't we train the young people? Why don't we make a defense of the gospel in our day? And the reason is because we're afraid we're going to get people mad at us. They're not going to like us anymore. They're not going to support our work. And then we're going to get turned off. But do you well, think there's a, a better way to do it? Because like, if you came on all, all the time, say these networks came on and, and they were blasting. always t blasting, other I'm not suggesting that. Instead of maybe teaching them, do, do you think it would help to like teach them while they were? If you just tell somebody, hey, you know, this I'm is suggesting right. you're right. I'm suggesting balance. Right. I'm suggesting that instead of being all over on the evangelism side and the teaching of the Christian life, we teach also the defense of Christianity, how you stand up for your faith. <laughs> Listen, you know this as well as I know it. You've had enough experience. Secular colleges, universities, and liberal seminaries eat Christians alive. You send a kid from a Christian home and a Christian church into a liberal situation and into a secular humanistic context, mm -hmm. and they go in like a revolving door. They're singing all hail the power of Jesus' name going in, and they come out bearded, bathless, and rebellious. And nobody knows what happened to them. Mm -hmm. I know what happened to them. I was there. Mm -hmm. I think you do too. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any answers and reasons for their faith. None. I'm not suggesting we yeah. go on television and blast all the time. I'm suggesting that part of our television programming, our radio programming, our Christian educational approach, take into consideration the necessity of training people to defend the gospel and their faith. I agree with you, and I, and I must say this. Um, <clears throat> I don't get a chance to watch a lot of Christians. Watch this network as much as I possibly can, and I... I see a trend that should be pleasing to you, from your point of view, that on Trinity Broadcasting, they're moving more and more, not into just, we're going to entertain we and inspire you with music and uh, teach the basic fundamental elementary truths of the Bible, but I see a move in some of the ministries on this channel that are getting into an apologetic presentation of the defense of Christianity. Maybe it's taken a while to get there because we're told to love your enemy. Well, loving your enemy doesn't mean that you become John and Mabel doormat. True. And, but I, I and see, Paul and loved I his enemies, too. Mm -hmm. But God help you if you got in the way. That's right. Look what he did to the Galatians. Well, you, you stupid Galatians. That, that's Paul. That's not me. You stupid Galatians. He did. Somebody else used that word yeah. stupid here tonight. I, I... <laughs> Man, and today, if I said, you stupid Christians, everybody say, oh, Walter Martin is insulting the body. Paul writes, and he takes the gloves off and says, you stupid Galatians, whoever led you away from the truth I gave you? And so soon, how dumb can you be? And he chews them up for three chapters, right? That's right. I mean, he gets to the Corinthians, it's a good thing I'm not there, <laughs> right? And it's a good thing I'm not there, because if I was there, That's right. look out, you see? Now, what happened to Peter? Uh, chewing away in Second Peter on the people that are pushing the truth into the background. Sure. What about Paul? The people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. What is censorship but the suppression of truth? If you can't speak, you're violating the First Amendment of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I'm not attacking the cults. I spent 35 years of my life bringing people out of cults to Jesus Christ. You see, the me methodology and the philosophy governing the Christians today in many areas is there is no battle. The only battle you've got is the battle that you don't have enough faith. Or the only battle you've got is you haven't got a new Mercedes, or you're not healthy enough. These are the battles they're fighting. Or whether Jesus came after the tribulation before it or in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're majoring in the minors, mm -hmm. and they're forgetting that if you don't defend the gospel, you're disobeying Christ. They're majoring in the minors, mm -hmm. and they're forgetting that if you don't defend the gospel, 
you're disobeying Christ. And we don't face false doctrine. Dave, as far as I'm concerned, is wrong when he says that, uh, and this is the key to the book. There's the book. What's the key? Dave is wrong. He says, in the following pages, when we use that word, he's referring here to um, uh, sorcery, the word sorcery. <laughs> when we use that word, our intended meaning will be any attempt to manipulate reality, internal, external, past, present, or future, by various mind over matter techniques that run the gamut from alchemy and astrology to positive possibility thinking. Okay, let's apply that definition. How about prayer? Hmm. Now, prayer is sorcery because prayer very definitely, specifically, is given to us so that we might call upon God to answer things and alter situations and circumstances. Is that... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, why pray? The definition so you, you of sorcery. So you take issue with Dave Hunt on oh, that particular... I, sir, well, now, I'm doing what I think should have been done a long time ago. He's wrong when he makes that kind of a blanket statement. Um, he's wrong when he lumps Christians That's into cool. the New Age movement. He's wrong when he does that. You can't put or by inference put people into New Ageism who are obviously not there. That's because, absolutely right. Because they use specific words or terms that are so-called buzzwords. I'm very pleased to hear you say uh, this let, tonight. Let, well, I'll go further, okay? Uh, also, I believe Dave is in error when he condemns all psychology, all psychiatry. That's right. Because there are good Christian psychologists. Jim Dobson has done more for the body of Christ mm -hmm. in psychology mm -hmm. That's right. than Dave could ever dream of doing the seduction of Christianity because it is really meeting these personal problems on a good level. Is he throwing out the baby with the bathwater? In some instances, very definitely. And when you, when you lump Christians together, when you do this, you suffer from imbalance. Right. So the imbalance hurts the body because people get upset and they say, well, I know that man, I know his ministry. He's not in the new age. So obviously, Dave makes a mistake. And I told him that before the book was published after hearing a lecture he gave. And I was on a panel with him, evangelical missions dealing with the subject of the cults. Mm -hmm. We discussed it. He knows exactly where I stand. He's my friend. I love him. He's coming on my program. We're going to talk two hours. He's going to pound the table and disagree with me. I'm going to disagree with him. But at least, Doug, in the name of sanity, the First Amendment, mm -hmm. and truth, people are going to hear both sides. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think, yeah. I think that's fair. You see? I think it's good. Now, that's a part of what Dave says and does. And there's a lot of things where I've, at Christian Research Institute, made constructive criticisms. But there's positive things. Does he accept that, your criticism? Well, he hasn't uh, sent me it. any nasty letters or called me on the phone. He might disagree, but he's a gentleman. And uh, he would, um, I think, give me the benefit of the doubt that I'm honest as he is. But what about the other side of the and coin? And we learn from one another. We certainly do. That's right. What about the other side of the coin? Where Dave's right, why don't we accept it? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Well, we don't, you see. We do the same thing on the other side. We throw the baby out with the bathwater because we are afraid that if we say anything, a lot of people are going to be upset. Well, let me illustrate what I mean. I just quoted Hunt. I can quote him again, but let me quote again something that he said that I think is worth saying. We know in the study of cults that Herbert W. Armstrong, the Mormons, Christian Science, Unity, and all the Hindu cults have a basic thesis that man is or can become a god. Every right. one of them. Right. Now we know that. We know it's occultic, we know it's evil, and we know it's to be rejected. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Correct. Everybody agrees to that? Yes. All right, now, when Christians teach that doctrine, it is still just as evil. It is still just as wrong and it must be spoken against no matter who they are. From Billy Graham on down to you and me at the bottom of the totem pole, mm -hmm. if we're teaching false doctrine, which is exactly what the cults are doing, then we are subject to criticism. Well, it's like Paul said in Galatians 1, if and even if an angel from heaven come right. and preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. Okay. Does That's exactly that? what you said. Then Paul's listen carefully. <clears throat> this is about Jesus Christ spiritual separation from God. 
Spiritual death also means having Satan's nature. What is Satan's nature? John 8. He is a liar and a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. Jesus defined his nature, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Spiritual death means separation from God. Spiritual death also means having Satan's nature. Jesus experienced the same spiritual death that entered man in the Garden of Eden. He became one with man in spiritual death. After Jesus was made sin, he had to be born again. See, you have to realize that Jesus died. You have to realize that he went into the pit of hell as a mortal man, made sin. But he didn't stay there, thank God. He was reborn in the pit of hell, in the pit of hell. You're talking about God the Son, second person of the Trinity. This is heresy. Thank you. <laughs> it's not only heresy, it's blasphemy. Do you know something? The minute that blood sacrifice was accepted, Jesus was the first human being that was ever born again. Now, it was sealed. I mean, it happened when he was in hell. Oh, they were having the biggest party that ever been had. They had my Jesus in the floor, and they were standing on his back, jumping up and down, laughing, and he had become sin. Don't you think that God was pacing, wanting to put a stop to what was going on? All the hosts of hell were up on him. Up on him. Up on him. The angels are in agony. All the creation is groaning. All the hosts of hell was upon him. Up on him. They got on him. They got him down in the floor and got on him. And they were laughing and mocking. Ah, ha, 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 ha. You trusted God, and look where you ended up. You thought he'd save you and get you off that cross. He didn't. Ha, ha, ha. That's true. Copeland, Kenneth Hagin. Said that? Yes. Chapter and verse, tapes and everything. It was an evening service. And I, I, you know, I just preached Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25, and, and I got over into that Jesus went to hell and he suffered there, and, and, and then he was born again in hell and rose from the dead, the firstborn from the dead. Je now, why in the name of God do we not follow the biblical principle? If we're going to hang Dave Hunt for where he's wrong, let's admit he's right. But we don't, wish, we don't wish to do this because we don't want to offend people. You can't use names. Since when? Hymenaeus and Philetus have erred concerning the truth. They teach the resurrection is past. They overturn the faith of the church. Didn't Paul say that? Right. Alexander the coppersmith had done me much harm. May the Lord reward him according to his works. Let me ask you a question then about the names you just named. Yeah. Do you believe these men are conscientious Christians? Yep. Born again? Yep. Love the Lord? Yep. Made a mistake? Doctrinal error. And so we don't throw them out because no, they made an improper no, statement. No, we love them. Right. What we do is we contact them, right? Uh huh. And we say to them, hey guys, this is wrong. And we give them the reasons, right? Mm hmm. We did. Uh huh. Nobody, nobody takes any envelopes. Nobody takes any letters. Nobody takes certified mail asking these questions as brothers. Let's sit down and talk about this. You don't get anything. All you get is condemnation of anybody that criticizes. Well, the truth of the matter is, mm -hmm. listen carefully. The Mormons say you can become a god. When you become a new creature, your spirit is completely recreated. You need to realize that you are not a spiritual schizophrenic, half God and half Satan. You are all God. Sound familiar? Really? Kenneth Copeland, Believer's Voice, Victory, 382. You are all God. He said, Benny, am I a little god? You're a son of God, aren't you? You're a child of God, aren't you? You're a daughter of God, aren't you? What, what else are you? Quit your nonsense. What else are you? If you say I am, you're saying I'm a part of him, right? Is he God? Are you his offspring? Are you his children? You can't be human. When I read in the Bible where he says I am, I just smile and say yes, I am too. I am a little God. Yes. Yes. I have his name. I'm one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yeah. I am a little God. Critics, you are begun. anything that he is. Yeah. Now, I don't care who he is. I don't care who Graham is. I don't care who you or Crouch or Robertson or anybody else is or me. 
We are under authority to Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. And if we are teaching this stuff, if we're teaching this stuff, we should, we should be corrected. We should not do it anymore. I agree. And I also want to go on to say we should be very careful at the same time, Walter, not to throw everything the man preaches and teaches out because he makes an error in one area. I'd be the last to suggest that, but I would be the first to point out that this is error. That if your theology of Jesus Christ is that corrupt, that you think that he died, went to hell, and had to be born again, mm -hmm. when you are talking about holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, the Word made flesh, God incarnate, where in Christian theology is this type of teaching? It doesn't exist. Jesus did not have Satan's nature. He didn't. No, he was sinless. He was sinless, you see. Right. And this is what I'm talking about. Now, this is just one area of where Hunt happens. There's areas where Hunt's wrong. Why do I cite Hunt as an example? Because he's one of the few people that had the guts, even though he made mistakes, to come out and say, this is wrong and this is right. Well, it's kind of like a Martin Luther. What nailing the 95 Thesis to the door to purify the doctrine of the church. And then they nail you to the door. Well, but that's the price you're going to have to pay <laughs> sure. for being an apologist. Right. For being a teacher of uh, truth. And I, I, I believe God raises up men like you. You stir big controversy. You've got more people talking in living rooms and dining rooms right now than anybody across. I mean, Merv Griffin might as well turn it off. I don't, I don't know what's on. Friday night television, but Miami Vice, you might as well go off the air because people are watching TBN. See, I think that... But uh, you're not doing it just for controversy. No. You are doing it to purify the doctrine. No. God raises up men like yourself to be salt and to be light in the theological circles. And we have to accept you, even though we may not like everything you say. Or even like you personally. The important thing is, is it true? That's true. That, that's the most important thing. Is it true? Now, mm -hmm. if it's true that this is false doctrine, and it is. Then we have to address the issue and counteract it. Then we address the issue. Sure. But that's what we don't do. We have those people on our TV programs and on our radio programs and all over the country teaching it, and nobody says anything Just about it. Just a minute, it. Walter. Just a minute. I beg to differ. You're here. Oh, yes, I'm here. Yes. You're here, so you can't say we're not addressing the issue. No. I'm I mean, are we addressing the issue tonight? Yeah, well, I'm addressing it by the My grace Lord, of God. we may not go off at 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, I address it by the grace of God. Let me tell you something else, too. No, but we are addressing it. You we are. are here. Yeah, I'm but, saying you know, by John and large. John was on Wednesday yeah. night with me. I'm saying by and large we don't address it, but let me tell you something. By and large. A letter was, we by and large. You are here tonight acting as salt, and I think it's good, and I think it's great that Dr. Paul Crouch has had here. Let's I face it, Paul has a great sense of humor. <laughs> what can we say? <laughs> I don't know whether he's sitting at home laughing no, right I'll, now or not. But if... uh, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Go this have is, coffee, this, Paul. This is Paul F. Crouch, president of TBN. Uh -huh. Paul, you're out there. You know, I'm going to do this. Careful. Ready? Are you ready for this? Ready? Okay. Yeah, well, get ready. Somebody Hawaiians. wrote him a letter <laughs> about whether or not man could become a god because they had heard Copeland say it. All right? Mm -hmm. Paul answered him. I want to quote Paul. How come I'm here tonight? What I think... <laughs> what I think I would like to say concerning the comment you made is that though we do not certainly believe that men are gods. Hallelujah! That's truth. <laughs> it's truth. We do not believe that men are gods. However, we believe that they've been created in God's image. So do I. In that regard, we have, they have godlike characteristics. It teaches that and so forth. Let me again say that we would not in any way project the idea that we are gods. All right. Paul won't. And Paul is denying it. And Paul is right. That's a correct letter. It is. But, this is my point. But, if we have people who do come on Christian television and they look right into the camera and talk to millions of people and they say to you, Dogs beget dogs, and cats beget cats, and God begets gods, and you are little gods. If horses get together, they produce what? And if dogs get together, they produce what? 
If cats get together, they produce what? But if the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. That is error and it is evil. Oral Roberts, who said that the Holy Spirit was the other self of Jesus. The other self of Jesus? The Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity. Jesus isn't a schizophrenic. So I, I sent him a letter and said, brother, this is a mistake. We should talk about this. I have never gotten a response to a certified letter. But you know, the fact that you didn't get a response to a certified letter, you're kind of getting a response right now. And in an indirect, direct way. Well, not from oral. Well, maybe you are. <clears throat> not from oral. But no, I from think, Paul, and I think what you're saying, what you're simply saying to these men, though you may not get an audible or written answer, you're getting through. I, but you're getting through. You know, it's a steady drop of water on the rock that eventually splits it. Well, you know, I'm sure God has raised you up to be a real theological troublemaker. <laughs> Where did you forget that idea from? <laughs> I'm sure what you're doing is good. I believe you're conscientious. I believe you're sincere. And for the most part, <clears throat> quote, I believe you're right for the most part. And you are salt in a world of church work, church theology that really needs salt. Can I say one thing? Please. I want to thank Paul and Jan, if they're listening, and TBN for having the courage to be willing to let this be discussed. I hope it'll continue. Well, I honestly, uh, I, I will provide the documentation from every tape, every article, everything that anybody I quote on this program said if they want it because the one thing at CRI we try and do is to maintain accuracy we're not going to say it we can prove it and we've been in business 35 years and we have never had a lawsuit lodged against us and I pray God we never will you've certainly stirred up enough living rooms from here to Miami they won't be sleeping till five o'clock in the morning and um, <laughs> it's there are a lot of people going to look at this program as it's rerun tomorrow. And uh, we'll it, will, be... you, it will be rerun tomorrow. You're sure of that? <laughs>